Hello everybody, this is Dr. Nadeem and we are with Neelam Path Lectures, the Pursue series. As you are aware, all our lectures are available on YouTube. We also have a Telegram group which you can join, which is helpful in accessing all lecture related information. We have a Google Drive with a PDF of all the lectures that are available. These are the disclaimers. We are with Phase 3, which is Recorded Pathology Lectures. And today we have Pursue 26ZA1, which is Dermatopathology skin adnexal tumors, follicular tumors and we are streaming from the famous Chidambaram lab diagnostic and scan center Chidambaram and to talk on today's topic which is skin adnexal tumor, the follicular tumors we have Dr. Sandhya Uma Maheshwaran she is an MD from Jipmer, a DNB she is a consultant pathologist and lab in charge of the famous Chidambaram diagnostics and scan center Chidambaram her areas of interest is dermatopathology, cytopathology and surgical pathology. Multiple publications in national and international journals awarded the DJ Reddy Memorial Prize <coughs> for the best postgraduate in pathology at the Jipmer Puducherry. She has worked as a senior resident also as, at Jipmer Puducherry. With this, I would request uh, Dr. Sandhya ma'am, please start your lecture on follicular tumors. Over to you. Thank you so much. Good evening to all of you. Today I'll be talking about cutaneous adnexal tumor, focusing mainly on follicular tumors. So I'll start with an introduction and uh, focusing primarily on histology of hair follicle, classification of hair follicular tumors, and cysts and hamartomas with hair follicular differentiation benign tumors, malignant tumors and syndromes associated with hair follicles and FNAC, IHC and molecular techniques. So cutaneous adnexal structures are sebaceous glands, eccrine and apocrine glands and hair follicle. So today I'll be focusing primarily on hair follicle. Before going into the topic, I would like to talk about a little history. These two gentlemen are Dr. Jacob Henley and Thomas Huxley. These two are the pioneers uh, uh, to work on the anatomy of hair follicle and they have primarily named all the layers and found out all the layers and the function of hair follicle. And all. So the primary function of cutaneous adnexal structures are protection, lubrication, thermoregulation, secretion, and the function of hair follicle mainly is the growth of hair and apart from the growth of hair shafts and all the other function is to uh, is to repair and regenerate uh, the epithelium in case of an injury so before going into the topic it is important to understand the uh, anatomy of a hair follicle so a hair follicle uh, is having six layers, six distinct layers and uh, there are three segments of hair follicle which are infundibulum, isthmus and inferior segment. So the cells of hair matrix differentiate along six layers which are medulla from which from inside to out they are medulla, cortex, cuticle of the inner root sheet, Huxley's layer which is two to four cell thickness with large number of trichohyaline granules in the cytoplasm and Henley's layer which is just a single layer of epithelium that abuts the outer root sheath and the outer root sheath that consists of clear cells because the cytoplasm is rich in glycogen. So these cells are PAS positive and um, see this is the cross section of a hair follicle which shows from inside to out the medulla cortex, cuticle of the inner root sheath and Huxley's layer, Henley's layer and outer root sheath. The outer root sheath in turn is surrounded by a basement membrane and a fibrous connective tissue sheet. And uh, this is, these are the segments of the hair follicle. The hair follicle at the bulb, this is the bulb of the hair follicle, it encloses a dermal papilla and hair follicle is divided into three segments. From top to bottom, these are uh, from where it projects outside 
till the opening of sebaceous glands it, the part is called infundibulum and from sebaceous gland to insertion of erector pili muscle it is called isthmus and below the insertion of uh, erector pili muscle is the inferior portion so this is an illustration that shows uh, all the layers of hair follicle from medulla cortex cuticle of inner root sheath huxley's layer henley's layer and outer root sheath if you notice the bulb portion of the hair you will see that there are these basaloid cells which are the germinative follicular germinative cells or the matricle cells uh, and these enclose a dermal papilla which is a mesenchymal part of the hair follicle so it is important to understand the anatomy because lot of hair follicular tumors differentiate along the lines of normal uh, morphological features that is some of the tumors may differentiate along the infundibulum some of the tumors may resemble the outer root sheath uh, um, and they will have a lot of clear cells and some of the uh, uh, tumors develop from these matricle cells or the germinative cells so uh, they'll have the feature the, they'll have the same features that are present in the normal hair follicle and that is why it is important to understand the anatomy of a hair follicle so if you notice this picture here you will see that there is a part known as adamson fridge this is nothing but um, all the layers of inner root sheet will keratinize this is at, at the isthmus see at the level of isthmus the inner root sheet uh, keratinizes like this gray part is the keratinization of the inner root sheet so what happens is the Henley's layer it will keratinize uh, abruptly and that part is known as Adams and fringe <coughs> and uh, there is a portion where the outer root sheet is devoid of the lining of inner root sheet and uh, only the outer root sheet is present and that will also abruptly keratinize without the presence of granular layer that type of keratinization is called trichelamal keratinization where there is absence of granular layer and it happens in the infundibulum where outer root sheath is devoid of inner root sheath so this is just a recap from the previous lecture so the appendageal structure arise from the ectoderm and follicular epithelial stem cells from the bulge region of the developing fetal hair follicle give rise to uh, what are known as our uh, hair follicle hair bulb and shaft so these all develop from multipotent stem cells uh, let us recap a little bit about histogenesis of adnexal tumor from the previous lecture. So the adnexal tumors develop from multipotent stem cells which have the potential to differentiate into different type of uh, tumors along the line of hair follicular differentiation, sebaceous differentiation, eccrine and apocrine cell lines sporadic as well as in the syndromes these are genetically predisposed to proliferate and form tumors with altered appendageal structures and that is the reason why they manifest more than one differentiation pattern so these are the sats and the 5s these are essentially a recap from the previous lecture we have to remember all these points before diagnosing any adnexal tumor similarity each adnexal tumor is similar to one another so we have to make use of certain morphological subtle clues to arrive at a particular diagnosis and why is it important to pick up a cutaneous adnexal tumor multiple cutaneous adnexal tumors are associated with a syndrome so if we pick up at an early stage we can avoid from visceral cancers developing or we can pick up a visceral cancer that is unknown and treated so we will discuss in detail about the syndromes associated with hair follicular tumors later and these tumors are site specific synonymous the names are confusing with one another like trichoblastoma trichelemoma trichoepithelioma and all but we will simplify the algorithm and learn it in a better way and while noticing a cutaneous adnexal tumor in addition to epithelium if we look at the stroma it will give some clue to the diagnosis 
So these are certain clues to differentiate benign adnexal neoplasm from malignant. Most important aspect is uh, benign tumors are well circumscribed and they are vertically oriented with respect to the surface of the skin whereas malignant tumors are infiltrative, invasive and ulcerating. So this is the classification of uh, tumors with follicular differentiation. Benign tumors with follicular differentiation are trichoblastoma, pilomatricoma, trichelemoma, trichoadenoma, trichofolliculoma, pilar sheath acanthoma, tumor of follicular infundibulum, trichodiscomas and fibrofolliculomas. Although confusing, there are some easier clues to differentiate each tumor. We will see in detail. So uh, take a look at this picture. Uh, this is a probably a benign adnexal tumor which is well circumscribed away from the surface epidermis. There is no ulceration or infiltration. It is well circumscribed and is vertically oriented with respect to the surface. Whereas if you look at this, this is a malignant adnexal tumor which is ulcerating the surface Phase and which is horizontally spreading with respect to the surface epithelium. So, before going into details of each adnexal tumor, let us remember what is trichelemal keratinization, how different it is from epidermal keratinization. So, as the name suggests, there are two types of keratinization trichelemal keratinization and epidermal keratinization. Uh, notice the picture here. This is basket weave orthokeratosis seen in the skin epidermis. There is a granular layer and on top of it there is a basket weave orthokeratosis and all. So if you notice this, these are keratohyaline granules which are blue, which stain blue in HND sections. Whereas Trichelemal keratinization is a little bit different. Trichelemal keratinization occurs <clears throat> from the outer root sheath where it abruptly turns into keratin without the absence of, without the presence of granular layer. So trichelemal keratinization means there is abrupt keratinization, there is absence of granular layer and it occurs at places where outer root sheath is devoid of inner root sheath. So trichelemma, uh, remember this, trichelemma essentially uh, points towards outer root sheath and this is useful to remember because there is a tumor which we will see later, trichelemoma, where the outer root sheath uh, differentiation predominates and we see lot of clear cells. So if you think about trichelemoma, just trichelemma or something, just remember the outer root sheath. So trichelemal keratinization has trichohyaline granules that stain. These are the granules that are seen in the inner root sheet. These stain uh, red on H and E section. Epidermal keratinization and keratinization of follicular infundibulum. See follicular infundibulum, if you recall from the anatomy, it is the part which opens into the surface. So essentially that infundibular part part will also have some similarity with the epidermis. So epidermis and tumors with infundibular differentiation will have epidermal keratinization where they will retain the granular layer and there will be a fine basket weave orthokeratotic pattern. Whereas trichelemal keratinization is something which occurs abruptly without the presence of granular layer. So with all these background, uh, we'll move into tumors of follicular. So uh, we'll start with cyst. Although essentially um, epidermal cyst is not uh, belonging to cutaneous adnexal tumor, it is prudent to differentiate these two before going into other tumors because these are the tumors which we will commonly encounter in our regular practice, day-to-day -day practice. These are our bread and butter. So it is prudent to identify the differences between trichelemal cyst and epidermal cyst. So uh, epidermal cyst they are very common epidermal cyst or infundibular cyst or epidermal inclusion cyst what we see day to day in and out in our practice these are very common these are seen in face back 
and uh, we see we 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 remember this anatomy like we remember this histology like the back of our hand like there will be a lining epithelium in the cyst and there will be a granular layer and there will be a fine layering of uh, basket weave orthokeratosis whereas trichlemal cyst or pilar cyst usually is less common than epidermal cyst like epidermal cyst is 90% or 85% trichlemal cyst occurs only 15% uh, of the cases and they are usually noticed in scalp and if you look at the lining of the cyst they are lined by uh, the stratified squamous epithelium but there is no granular layer and the keratin is also not like the typical basket weave orthokeratotic pattern which we see in EIC this kerat keratin is somewhat eosinophilic and homogeneous uh, if you look at an electron microscopic level there are a lot of differences uh, between these two intermediate filaments so it is important to remember these differences before making a diagnosis of an epidermal cyst or a pilar cyst uh, uh, to summarize what I said, trichlemal cyst is less common than epidermal cyst. It occurs in scalp. It is an enucleated, firm, smooth, white walled cyst. Uh, there will be palisading and swollen cells with eosinophilic cytoplasm and no granular layer. There is a homogeneous eosinophilic kerat keratin and um, there, there is foci of calcification in trichlemal cyst, whereas calcification is not so common in epidermal cyst. But because of the keratin, there is a lot of uh, foreign body giant cell reaction that results in keratin granuloma. So, uh, let us uh, look at the classification of hair follicular tumors. In hyperplasias and hematomas, we have hair follicle nevus, dilated pore of finer, and basaloid follicular hematoma. Benign tumors are pilar sheet acanthoma, trichofolliculoma, fibrofolliculoma, and trichodiscoma, trichoepithelioma, trichoblastoma, trichoadenoma, trichilemoma, pilomatricoma. And in malignant tumors, we have proliferating trichlemal tumor, trichoblastic carcinoma, pilometrical carcinoma, and trichlemal ca carcinoma. So I have highlighted trichofolliculoma, trichoepithelioma, and trichodiloma in similar colors because these are uh, spectrum of lesions. Trichofolliculoma is the most well differentiated tumor. Trichoepithelioma is uh, far in the far side and trichoadenoma is in between and uh, uh, after trichoepithelioma comes trichoblastoma the differentiation becomes uh, from well differentiated to less differentiated along these lines where in less differentiation you have more number of basaloid cells and uh, trichelemoma uh, is kept separately it it is a tumor that differentiates towards outer root sheath. You will have a lot of clear cells. And uh, fibrofolliculoma and trichodiscoma are an interesting uh, spectrum of lesions. We will see in detail each of them. Although the names are a little bit intimidating and confusing, uh, if we remember the anatomy of uh, hair follicle and the histology of hair follicle in each level, and it is easier to classify these tumors and remember the histopathology of each tumor as they reminisce the normal histology mostly. Hair follicular nevus. Uh, if you recall back to sebaceous tumors, we started with nevus sebaceous. Hair follicular nevus is also somewhat similar to nevus sebaceous. It is also known as congenital vellus hamartoma. It is present at birth as a small nodule on the face and it is a part of a neurocutaneous syndrome much like nevus sebaceous. So what happens in this is there is focally increased vellus hair follicles and these are accompanied by sebaceous glands. Uh, it lacks cartilage because if cartilage were present this would resemble the histopathology of this would resemble an accessory tragus and uh, there is also a lack of central cystic cavity. So, uh, primarily, this is a tumor with lot of um, villous hair follicles. 
will move on to dilated pore of minor and pilar sheath acanthoma i have clubbed both of these together because uh, these two have somewhat similar morphological features uh, dilated pore of minor occurs in face and eyelid whereas pilar sheath acanthoma is more common in the skin of the upper lip so in both of these conditions the common thing is there is a central cystic cavity filled with keratin and uh, this cavity is surrounded by a lot of ready ridges which are thin in case of dilated pore of minor whereas they are very lob the masses uh, whereas the uh, there are lobulated masses of epithelial cells that radiate from cyst wall in case of pilar sheath acanthoma. That is the subtle difference between these two tumors. There is an irregular cystic cavity and it is surrounded by thin epithelial ready ridges in case of dilated pore of viner. Whereas in pilar sheath acanthoma, there are lobulated masses branching out from the cystic cavity. And the differentiation of dilated pore of viner is towards infundibulum. Whereas pilar sheath acanthoma may reminisce some features of outer roshi as it may show some clear cells. So look at the histology of dilated pore of mine. There is an irregular cystic cavity filled with keratin and thin epithelial ready ridges branch out from the cystic cavity. Whereas pilar sheath acanthoma also has a cystic cavity in the center. Whereas the uh, masses of cells that branch out from the wall of the cystic cavity are very big and they have somewhat clear cells as compared to dilated pore of minor. Basaloid follicular hematoma is clinically similar to nevus sebaceous. If you recall, nevus sebaceous presents clinically as alopecia in childhood or adolescent phase. Basaloid follicular hematoma also somewhat presents similar to it in the sense clinically the patient will have alopecia, progressive alopecia starting in adulthood. And there are diffuse papules and plaques on face. And there is association with systemic conditions like myasthenia gravis, SLE, cystic fibrosis and diffuse alopecia. What happens in uh, histopathology of basalite follicular hematoma is the place where normal hair follicles are supposed to be, there is proliferation of lot of lace like network of basaloid cells and uh, the differentiation of which resembles that of trichoepithelioma. It is a very well circumscribed lesion with lot of lace-like network of basaloid cell. There is no ATP, no mitosis, no necrosis. It is associated with PTCH mutation and uh, there is some association with Gorlin syndrome. BCC may arise from this lesion but it is bare EP4 negative. It, it is an epithelial cell adhesion molecule that is usually uh, uh, comes positive in basal cell carcinoma. It is negative in basal eye follicular hematoma. When basal eye follicular hematoma is associated with Gorlin syndrome or something, it may evolve into a BCC. Fibrofolliculoma and trichodiscoma. These two are very interesting lesions. These are clubbed together as one because they may be um, same, same uh, lesion that are coexisting, uh, that are given different names because uh, of sectioning at different level or depending on the age of the lesion or uh, sampling or whatever it is, they, these are a spectrum of lesions. So in fibrofolliculoma, we have a central distorted hair follicle surrounded by a mantle of basophilic fibrous stroma, as the name suggests. Whereas in trichodiscoma, it is, it is just a hematoma of mesodermal component of the hair disc, where you will have a lot of fine fibrillary connective tissue that pushes away normal structures such as sebaceous lobules and all. So clinically, there is a dome-shaped papule and histopathologically, there is an infundibulocentric proliferation of delicate epithelial strand. These are usually seen in nose and perinasal skin and multiple fibrofolliculomas are associated with Bert hogg dube syndrome. There is follicle gene mutation in these tumors. 
so these two pictures show the uh, histological differences between trichodiscoma and fibrofolliculoma in fibrofolliculoma there is a central infundibulum with radiating epithelial strands surrounded by a collagenous stroma in trichodiscoma we, you have a lot of fine fibrillary connective tissue with mucin collagen and fibrocytes we we'll move on to trichofolliculoma trichofolliculoma also has a central cystic cavity filled with keratin and it is surrounded by these thin uh, epithelial reti ridges much like uh, what we saw in dilated pore of viner and pilarshi takanthoma clinically trichofolliculoma presents as a solitary lesion on the face usually seen in face scalp and neck it is a dome shaped nodule with a central pore so there may be a wool like tuft of hair emerging from the pore histopathology in dermis there is this large cystic cavity lined by squamous epithelium the different there is differentiation towards outer root shield so immunohistochemically they may show positivity for ck17 ck16 ck17 and treatment is excision so as i said earlier trichofolliculoma uh, trichoadenoma trichoepithelioma and trichoblastoma are all a spectrum of lesion and trichofolliculoma is the most well differentiated component of it where you have just mature squamous cells and you don't have that much of uh, immature basaloid cells you have some uh, differentiation towards outer root sheath also and then there is the cystic cavity filled with keratin so next lesion is trichoadenoma it is a rare solitary tumor which occurs on face and more common in the elderly very rarely it may occur in the nail bed or auditory canal what happens in trichoadenoma trichoadenoma is at the well uh, inter intermediate uh, between trichofolliculoma and trichoepithelioma Uh, instead of a single horn cyst like trichofolliculoma you have numerous horn cyst throughout the dermis and these are surrounded by eosinophilic cells so granular layer may be present in this and it will have keratohyalin granules it means this tumor has a differentiation towards infundibulum part of the hair follicle infundibulum if you recall uh, is similar to epidermis so it will have keratohyalin granules and it will uh, have granular layer so trichodenoma differentiates more towards the infundibular part of the hair follicle Uh, next tumor is trichoepithelioma we are coming towards the far end of the spectrum trichoepithelioma presents as small flesh colored papules and it is noteworthy that uh, a single look at this makes you think about basal cell carcinoma so trichoepithelioma is a very very common differential diagnosis for basal cell carcinoma histopathologically uh, we'll see in detail about how to differentiate trichoepithelioma um, in there is dermal proliferation of basaloid cells with peripheral palisading and as nest and cords uh, papillary mesenchymal bodies may be present these papillary mesenchymal bodies are nothing but uh, rounded stromal cells that invaginate into the basaloid cells so closest to differential is basal cell carcinoma always always keep in mind these two things and the pointers of differentiation before making a diagnosis stroma is pink fibrous and delicate it is important to note this because basal cell carcinoma will have a mucinous stroma uh, and it will also have peripheral palisading with retraction artifact and clefting if you notice here there is not much of retraction and clefting and the stroma is pink fibrous and delicate there is a variant of trichoepithelioma called desmoplastic trichoepithelioma where there is lot of fibrous tissue in between and the basaloid cells are very minimal in number there is very small nest that uh, resembles morphia form uh, B variant of bcc which is even more confusing to diagnose 
So a look at these papillary mesenchymal bodies. These are stromal cells that are round to oval shaped and they contains an indent into the epithelial nest. These are reminiscent of mesenchymal hair papillae in the basis of normal hair follicle. These are usually seen in benign hair follicular tumors like trichoepithelioma and sometimes in trichoblastoma also. So this image is from this very nice article, uh, Skin Adnexal Tumors in Plain Language. This is an open access article. It is easily accessible. And if you go through this article, it will give you a clear idea about uh, diagnosing uh, and learning all cutaneous adnexal tumors. So to recall, once again, uh, the three tumors which we saw now, trichofolliculoma, trichoadenoma and trichoepithelioma, these are a spectrum of lesions where in trichofolliculoma you have a large central cystic cavity filled with keratin and a small epithelial branching from, uh, uh, from ray which radiate from the wall of the cystic cavity. Trichoadenoma, you have numerous horn cysts in the um, dermis and these are surrounded by eosinophilic cells. And in trichoepithelioma, you have more number of these basaloid cells with peripheral palisading and maybe occasional horn cyst. So in the next tumor is trichoblastoma. Uh, it is a benign biphasic tumor where there is dual differentiation towards follicular germinative epithelium and papillae, which means you have the epithelial component as well as the stromal component. Uh, they're usually sporadic, uh, so they are single. But if they are multiple, uh, you have to suspect brooks pagler syndrome. In brooks pigler syndrome, there is a variant multiple familial trichoepitheliomas which are associated with germline mutation in CYLD gene. So uh, these are solitary skin covered papule, usually uh, 5 to 30 millimeter uh, and preferentially involve nasolabial fold. If you look at it, this is quite a big tumor seen in the scalp. So trichoblastoma is a well circumscribed non ulcerating tumor involving uh, dermis. If you recall uh, both trichoepithelioma and trichoblastoma, there is no connection with epidermis. This is one another point that differentiates from basal cell carcinoma, which is ulcerating, which is always connected with the epidermis. So in trichoblastoma, we have uniform basaloid cells and the stromal component resembles follicular papillae and perifollicular sheath. So architectural variants of trichoblastoma are nodular, adamantinoid, uh, retiform and desmoplastic. Closest to differential diagnosis is basal cell carcinoma. IHC wise, um, PHLD1, uh, it is a follicular stem cell marker, it may be positive and epithelial cell hydration molecule may be positive in trichoblastoma also. It is not so useful to differentiate between BCC and trichoblastoma. Uh, to some extent, it may be positive in both the tumors, but epithelial cell, cell hydration molecule is usually more commonly seen in basal cell carcinoma. The next tumor is trichelemoma. Uh, it is a benign epithelial proliferation of hair follicular infundibulum. So this it usually presents as a very small hemispherical papule um, and uh, predilection is towards the centrofacial area. It can be associated with nervous sebation and multiple trichoepitheliomas are associated with uh, uh, Cowden syndrome, which is a germline mutation in phosphatase tensin gene. So, uh, trichelemoma, uh, so far we have seen two syndromes, multiple familiar trichoepitheliomas are associated with brooks pigler syndrome, whereas uh, multiple cutaneous trich trichelemomas, trichelemomas are associated with Cowden syndrome. So this is the histopathology of trichelomoma, where you see um, a canthotic epidermis with uh, lobules of monomorphic epithelial cells and uh, these have clear cells because they differentiate towards outer root sheath and they have a thick basement membrane um, surrounding it because they develop from uh, they, they also have some um, predilection towards uh, perifollicular sheath and uh, there is a central fossa of infundibular keratinization. 
the next tumor most important tumor is pilomatricoma uh, we it is possible to encounter these in our uh, uh, routine practice usually seen in children and it can grow up to 5 cm these are one of the biggest uh, uh, hair follicular tumors these are usually seen in face and extremities and these are firm deep seated nodule covered by normal skin sometimes they may appear very reddish or bluish the differentiation is towards hair cortex cells so histopathologically <clears throat> these are a well demarcated lesion with two types of cells shadow cells and basophilic cells basophilic cells are basaloid cells which are hair matrix cells which we show, saw initially whereas uh, the ghost cells which are uh, the shadow cells they are called so because their outer line outer uh, lining is somewhat pale and uh, there is a, the nucleus the part where nucleus was present also appears very pale and uh, there is transformation of basaloid cell into the shadow cells with loss of new see if you look at this it's a well circumscribed lesion with uh, two types of cells these are the shadow cells and these are the basaloid cells and this is the part where the basaloid cell transition into shadow cells the shadow cells have their outer uh, ghost lining preserved and the nuclei the part where nuclei also was present is also preserved there may be calcium deposits in 75% of cases of pilomatricoma cytoplasm of uh, shadow cells show fine base of lick granules and there is foci of calcification and may be present in the stroma of tumors and bone morphogenic protein 2 is expressed in the shadow cells and it has that that is the reason for bone formation that explains the bone formation in pilomatric melanocytic matricoma is essentially a variant of pilomatricoma with lot of dendritic melanophages uh, located in the islands of basophilic cells that appears pigmented so uh, in the anatomy of hair follicle what happens is in the upper part in fundibular part there will be lot of dendritic melanophages whereas in the lower part towards the hair bill, there will be amelanotic melanophages um but uh, if there is lot of migration of dendritic melanophages into the hair bulb part we will have this variant melanocytic matricoma tumor of follicular infundibulum it presents as a solitary flat keratotic papule clinically it may mimic bcc it may also be associated with cowden syndrome and nevus sebaceous histopathology shows a plate like growth of epithelial cells in the upper epidermis and these epithelial cells have pale cytoplasm in the center and sh may show peripheral palisade so with this we'll move into the malignant tumors of um, hair follicular differentiation trichoblastic carcinoma or carcinosarcoma if you recall we saw trichoblastoma is a benign biphasic tumor so uh, it goes without saying that trichoblastic carcinoma will have dual component uh, there is a malignant epithelial component and there is a malignant mesenchymal component um it pre usually presents in elderly as a solitary nodule in the head and neck it is a biphasic malignant neoplasm so the malignant epithelial component resembles the follicular germinative cells whereas the malignant stromal component re resembles the follicular mesenchyme epithelial component shows lot of atypia mitosis you know epithelial and stromal component appear distinct and it is usually uh, positive for p53 mutation and uh, shows third promoter mutation in cdk and 2a genes pilomatricular carcinoma uh, it is an ulcerating infiltrating malignant neoplasm it is a poorly circumscribed tumor uh, there are, uh, the, these basaloid cells are atypical with vesicular chromatin and show atypical mitosis shadow cells are seen but are lesser in number as compared to pilomatricoma uh, in addition to that there will be necrosis and mass and these tumors show nuclear and cytoplasmic staining for beta catenin these tumors show beta catenin mutation nuclear staining for cdx2 lef1 
and uh, epithelial cell addition molecule is negative. Differential diagnosis is basal, basal cell carcinoma with matrix cell differentiation. However, uh, it will show beta catenin negativity. Trichelamyl carcinoma, it is a malignant adnexal neoplasm with outer root sheet differentiation. So that explains a lot of clear cells that are present in this neoplasm. It, is a, it presents as an ulcerated erythematous tan flesh colored papule. Risk factors for trichelamyl carcinoma are any immunosuppression due to solid organ transplant, radiotherapy, chronic actinic damage or zero derma pigmentosum. Histopathology shows lobules of these atypical cells with excessive mitotic activity and pushing borders into pilosebaceous unit. So PA is a strongly positive periodic acid shift and P53 is diffusely positive. CD34 may be focally positive. CD34 positivity indicates outer root sheet differentiation. In addition to that, CK10, 14, 17 may also be positive indicating infundibular differentiation. So differential diagnosis uh, for this tumor is proliferating trichelamate tumor, which we will see next. Proliferating trichelamyl tumor, it is again a solid cystic neoplasm with differentiation toward ismic portion of outer root sheath. It is also a spectrum where in one end there is benign cystic part and in another end you have malignant proliferating trichelamyl tumor. So it's a solid cystic neoplasm with lot of epithelial infoldings. Uh, into a cystic cavity where there is aggregate of compact eosinophilic keratin with areas of abrupt trichelamyl keratinization. Uh, and in the malignant end of the spectrum, you will have uh, tumors showing infiltrative growth. So these tumors show TP53 mutation and there is loss of heterozygosity of 17p chromosome. So we'll move on to the syndromes associated with hair follicular tumors. Um, we already saw Brooks-Pegler syndrome and a variant of Brooks-Pegler syndrome called as multiple familial trichoepitheliomas. Um, it is an autosomal dominant syndrome in which there is a lot of cutaneous adnexal tumors like spiroadenoma, cylindroma, trichoepitheliomas presenting in the nasolabial fold. And in addition, uh, we have a salivary gland tumor, basal cell adenoma. So a variant of this brooks pigler syndrome is multiple familial trichoepitheliomas, which presents with essentially skin lesions. There is mutation in CYLD gene, which is a tumor suppressor gene on chromosome 16. The next is Cowden syndrome. It is a multiple hematoma syndrome. It is an autosomal dominant genodermatosis where there is mutation of phosphatase tensin gene of chromosome 10. Uh, the cutaneous manifestations are trichelomomas of lips, nasolabial region. And if you pick up this cutaneous marker, it will help you to screen any visceral malignancies as these patients are predisposed to endometrial cancers and breast cancer. That is, why, that is what makes it more important to diagnose uh, this the, this uh, this syndrome with cutaneous markers like trichelomomas, fibromas, and oral papillomatosis. So, Bert Hogg Dube syndrome. It is an autosomal dominant syndrome where there is skin, renal, and pulmonary manifestation. In skin, you have multiple fibrofolliculomas, and in kidney, you may have oncocytoma or renal cell carcinomas and pulmonary cyst. So fibrofolliculoma, if you recall, uh, trichodiscoma and fibrofolliculoma, a spectrum of lesions. Uh, in fibrofolliculoma, uh, you have a central infundibular radiating follicle surrounded by dense fibrous stroma. And trichodiscoma, you have a lot of these uh, fibrotic stroma uh, with collagen that pushes the sebaceous lobules. What is the role of fine needle aspiration cytology in diagnosing tumors of hair follicular differentiation? A um, lot of times we encounter pilar cyst and uh, epidermal inclusion cyst. So um, although it is difficult to diagnose um, on an FNAC, we, we need to make use of certain clues like calcification or any presence of any basaloid cells or any of these ghost squames 
to um, make a diagnosis of uh, pilar cyst or a tri uh, or a pilomatric coma. Um, so this was a case of pilomatric coma. Um, predominantly, there were a lot of these ghost squames. If you look closely, there is this ghost nuclei and all. But uh, one end of this slide showed a uh, few uh, clusters of basaloid cells that helped us to diagnose pilomatric coma. So whenever we see a lot of ghost squames, uh, instead of blindly diagnosing them as epidermal inclusion cyst, we need to search for basaloid cells or any other clues to look for uh, other tumors like pilomatric coma or any other tumors of follicular differentiation. We have to pick up certain subtle clues like clear cells, keratin, debris, and basaloid cells to enable us suspect the adnex cell tumor. Let us move on to the immunohistochemistry part. Immunohistochemistry may not help you 100% in diagnosing follicular tumors. However, there are certain immunomarkers that help in differentiating certain follicular tumors from basal cell carcinomas. Among that most useful marker is uh, BER EP4 or epithelial cell addition molecule which is usually positive in basal cell carcinomas however negative in lot of hair follicular tumors but it may be positive in certain trichoblastomas so we have to be careful in interpreting this marker. Uh, next one is plextrin homology like domain family A member 1 which is PHLDA1 also known as folliculin which is a follicular stem cell marker positive in hair follicular tumors and negative in basal cell carcinomas. CK20 highlights Merkel cells. If you notice the picture here this is um, normal epidermis with the Merkel cells, normal Merkel cells that show paranuclear granular positivity uh, for CK20. CK20 um, is positive in the Merkel cells that are uh, seen in hair follicular tumors like Merkel cells are normally present in the outer root sheet so they are uh, usually seen in certain hair follicular tumors so CK20 will highlight the Merkel cells that are present in hair follicular tumors but these are absent in basal cell carcinoma. And then in pilomatric coma and pilomatrical carcinoma, beta catenin comes cytoplasmic and nuclear positivity. I mean, there is a CTNNB1 mutation in pilomatric coma. So, beta catenin is expressed in pilomatric coma along with CDX2, which shows nuclear positivity, and LEF1, which is lymphoid enhancer binding factor 1, which also shows nuclear positivity in pilomatricoma and pilomatrical carcinomas. So, uh, this table summarizes the positive immunomarkers in basal cell carcinoma, trichoblastoma and trichoepithelioma. It is from this article which is a, a nice article, an open access article uh, which gives a practical approach uh, on skin tumors for a general surgical pathologist. I recommend all of you to read this article as it is very useful and uh, I have highlighted uh, this table from the article. So, if we see uh, CD34 uh, is present in stroma in a lot of uh, trichoepitheliomas, whereas they may not be very prominent in basal cell carcinoma. An androgen receptor is positive in basal cell carcinoma, the epithelium of basal cell carcinoma, whereas these are negative in trichoblastoma and trichoepithelioma. So we have to take into account morphology, morphological features and then combine it with immunohistochemistry to arrive at a particular diagnosis. So what are the molecular methods that are helpful uh, in diagnosing cutaneous adnexal tumor? As we saw already, um, beta catenin is upregulated in um, uh, pilomatricoma and pilomatrical carcinoma because of the CTNNB1 mutation. So uh, sequencing of that or uh, performing immunohistochemical stain will uh, help in making a diagnosis of pilomatricoma and pilomatrical 
so this table summarizes the mutations that are positive in different hair follicular tumor uh, basaloid follicular hamartoma has patched one gene mutation which is a component of hedgehog signaling pathway it is also associated with the nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome and gorlin syndrome in fibro folliculoma and trichodiscoma there is a follicle in gene mutation so it is associated with bird hog dube syndrome pilomatricoma and pilomatrical carcinoma we already saw that there is a ctn and b1 activating mutation and in trichoblastoma uh, there is a hras mutation and in trich trichoblastic carcinoma there is tp53 cdkn2a and third promoter mutation in trichoepithelioma also there is a patched one gene mutation and a cyld mutation in trichelemoma uh, the syndromic form is associated with phosphatase tensin gene mutation that is present in cowden syndrome and uh, trichelemal carcinoma has a tp53 mutation trichelemal cyst has a pl cd1 mutation which is phospholipase c delta 1 which is a tumor suppressor gene actually so sequencing of uh, these uh, genes uh, will help us um, arrive at a particular diagnosis of a cutaneous uh, follicular tumor in uh, especially useful in syndromic cases because uh, uh, syndromic manifestations in um, as uh, hair follicular tumors with syndromic manifestation if we pick it up at an early stage they'll help us uh, screen for a visceral visceral malignancy and uh, detect a visceral malignancy help us detect a visceral malignancy especially in cowden syndrome So to summarize, hair follicular tumors differentiate along several components of hair follicles such as germinative matrix cells as seen in trichoblastoma and pilomatricoma, outer root sheath as seen in trichelemoma and there is a spectrum of benign tumors starting from trichofolliculoma which is the most well differentiated tumor and with trichoadenoma in between and trichoepithelioma and trichoblastoma at the farther end with plenty of basaloid cells most common differential diagnosis for hair follicular tumors are basal cell carcinoma and its variants especially keratotic variant of bcc and follicular variant of bcc so a simple table to differentiate follicular tumors from basal cell carcinoma is follicular tumors usually there is no connection to epidermis they are well circumscribed seen well in the seen as a dermal nodule well within the dermis and subcutis in basal cell carcinoma not only there is a connection to epidermis there is surface ulceration and infiltration into the dermis also in follicular tumors peripheral palisading is present but there is no this clefting or retraction that is seen in basal cell carcinoma so the stroma of follicular tumors will help us arrive at uh, the diagnosis because it is usually fibrous delicate stroma reminiscent of papillary mesenchyme whereas in basal cell carcinoma we usually have a mucinous stroma papillary mesenchymal bodies which are round to oval stromal cells which indent into the epithelial cells we saw papillary mesenchymal bodies in trichoepithelioma and trichoblastoma these papillary mesenchymal bodies are absent in basal cell carcinoma so immunohistochemistry wise phlda1 which is a follicular stem cell marker which may be positive in follicular tumors but negative in basal cell carcinoma ck20 highlights the merkel cells in follicular tumors however it is negative in basal cell carcinoma ck15 may be positive in follicular tumors however negative in basal cell carcinoma whereas bir ep4 is negative in follicular tumors and positive in basal cell carcinomas so if anyone is interested in a small trivia it is just a recall of what we saw earlier numerous trichelemalses are seen in gardner syndrome multiple fibrofolliculomas are associated with bird hog dube syndrome uh, 
மல்டிபிள் ட்ரைக்கிலியோமாஸ் ஆர் அசோசியேட்டட் வித் கவுடன் சின்ட்ரோம் மல்டிபிள் ட்ரைக்கோயோபெத்திலியோமாஸ் ஆர் அசோசியேட்டட் வித் ப்ரூக்ஸ் பீக்லஸ் சின்ட்ரோம் அண்ட் பேசலாய்ட் ஃபாலிகுலர் ஹமாட்டோமா இஸ் அசோசியேட்டட் வித் நீவாய்ட் பேசல் செல் கார்சினோமா சின்ட்ரோம் தீஸ் ஆர் த ரெஃபரன்சஸ் அண்ட் தீஸ் டூ ஆர் வெரி நைஸ் ஆர்டிக்கல் ஐ சஜஸ்ட் எவ்ரி ஒன் டு கோ த்ரூ திஸ் ஆர்டிக்கல் த லாஸ்ட் டூ and i thank you so much sir for this wonderful opportunity